In this video, we are going to quickly review nine Canva apps that are kind of hot right now. We are going to talk about AI stuff like text to image or text to speech, but also a bunch of Canva apps that will help you elevate your Canva designs. Let's go. Hey, what's up everyone? Ronnie here. Welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to talk about nine of the newest and hottest Canva apps. You may or may not already know, but Canva recently decided to open up their ecosystem and let any third party company develop an app that would run on Canva. And therefore, quite regularly, we see some new apps making it to the Canva apps marketplace. So in this video, what we are going to do is to go over some of these cool apps that were recently released on the Canva marketplace. At least some apps I personally find interesting. All right, so quick reminder before we jump into it, where do you find these apps? Where well, two different ways. First one from the Canva homepage, you can look at this left menu right here and you should see a button called apps. So when you click here, you land on the app marketplace. So from here, you can discover the apps, you can search for apps via the search box and you can browse the different apps apps categories, okay? Just be aware that there is a new section right here, it says new. So these right here on top are probably the latest ones that Canva added to the marketplace. So that's the first way to find your apps. The second way is straight from within the editor. Canva has an app tab right here in the object panel or the left side menu right here. So when you click on apps, you land on a similar, I would say, panel where you can browse the different apps. Something to highlight here is that Canva recently redesigned their own app logos. So all of these apps right here, the charts, photos, bulk create logos, translate video, all of this, they redesigned these logos. They now look pretty cool. So these that say more from Canva are all the apps that Canva has developed. And then below these Canva apps, you have all of the apps that were not designed, that were not developed by Canva, but by third party companies. All right. And this is exactly what we are going to review today, or at least nine of the newest ones. All right, so without further ado, let's jump into the heart of this video and discover these nine new apps. I have divided the video into three categories of apps, and we're going to start right now with some image generation or text to image apps. The first one of these text to image apps is the famous doll E app from OpenAI. So let's search for it. So from here, I'm just going to type in Dal E. Okay, so it's the first one right here. It has the OpenAI logo. So when you click on Dal E, this is what you will see. A very simple menu. You have a text box here on top and it says start with a detailed description. So we need to insert a prompt in that text box. And then they give you three examples. Try an example made with Dali, horse riding, astronaut, digital art, an oil painting, by Matisse of a humanoid robot playing chess. And then the last one, an armchair in the shape of an avocado. Okay, so I think the rules for creating good text to image prompts apply here. So you kind of need to reference to an artistic style to maybe a famous painter or a graffiti artist or an illustrator. It's always good to have these details in your prompt if you want this to render the best images. All right, so let's try a prompt. We are going Going to try a cat jumping into a colorful pool in the style of Banksy. Okay, let's try that. Generate. So it's going to take a couple of seconds. Also, something I didn't tell you that you will have with the DAL E app 25 prompts per month. Okay, so every month these 25 prompts should refresh. All right, so we have a cat jumping into a colorful pool in the style of Banksy. So this one is not too bad, actually. I'm going to use that and make it a bit bigger so you can actually see what's going on here. All right, so I'm moderately satisfied about this outcome. I mean, it's not too bad, but I would like something really crisp. I would like something really beautiful, kind of like, you know, like these AI generated images you see are 
are beautifully like lit with the colors and the shades and everything. So maybe I need a little bit of help. So one thing we could do from here is to prompt, it could be Canvas like AI assistant, or it could be ChatGPT or Claude or any chatbot really that will help us come up with a better prompt. So here, since I'm in Canva, I'm going to try to use Canva's magic write feature, okay, to help me generate a prompt. So I'm just going to type help me generate a prompt to get an image generated by dal e okay i would like a fixer like character of a cute robot with large expressive eyes i want the image to be of high resolution. Okay, let's see if Canva Magic Write can help me generate that prompt. Okay, so I'm hitting enter here, and here are some results. To generate your image, uh, generate a high resolution image of a pixel like robot character with large expressive eyes. So it's almost the same thing I wrote, but let's try. Okay, or maybe I should go back instead of generate it again, I should go back and then generate it from here. Okay, generate. So there you go, my two robots here. I thought I said eyes, plural. There's only one eye here, guys, but at least this is kind of sharp. This is kind of neat. I could probably use that somehow. So this is one. Let me delete the cat here. And this one right here is the other one. I don't have the top of their head right here. It's kind of a flat head. So there we go. This is what I was able to generate in a couple of minutes with the DALI app right here in Canva. I guess it's just like for everything else AI related, the better you prompt, the better your outcome will be. So I'm not a pro prompter when it comes to image generation. I'm much more comfortable with text generation like ChatGPT. Diana is kind of an expert in prompting for images. But yeah, I guess the model is here. It's really up to you to use use it. Now, one cool thing about these images that are generated is that you can pretty much edit them as if they were any regular Canva image. So if I select it, I can now access the edit button right here, edit photo button. And I could use, for example, the magic edit. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to brush over all of this right here. I'm going to do something like so. All right, and continue. I'm going to type add a large sombrero. Add a large sombrero. Okay, so adding that, see how my little robot looks like with a large sombrero. All right, so I have my four images. I don't know why the heck I have this guy right here, but yeah, this sombrero is not too bad. I could probably try this one. This one is weird. I don't know. Maybe this guy is called Sombrero or something. All right, let's go for this one. Done. All right, so I've used AI to generate an image from nothing, my robot here. And two, I've added a Sombrero also generated from nothing. We live in a wonderful world. Now, let's move on to the second app. The second app that also generates images similar to the first one is called Imagen. And this time it's not from OpenAI, but it's from Google. All right, so let's first install the Imagen app. So we are going to search right here in the app search bar. So it's called Imagen. Okay, Imagen like so. I'm going to click on that. And it's this icon right here with a little cloud and the Google colors. So I'm going to click on it. All right, so when you open Imagen, you have a very similar interface than the one of DAL-E, you have your prompt box right here, a couple of examples, and it says submit a text prompt to generate images. You can try an example, you can simply add, so a small cactus wearing a straw hat and neon sunglasses in the Sahara Desert, a group of hot hair balloons floating peacefully above a picturesque landscape at sunset. So that's good, but I want to try my own prompt, which is a cute tiny mouse holding a piece of luxury cheese, Pixar, okay? 
I'm very much into the Pixar characters recently. So let's see if Imogen can generate a nice looking Pixar type of mouse. Okay, generate. So here, similarly, we'll have 25 free credits per month. And by free credits, I mean two image generated. So here, I just use one credit, for example, for generating these two images. These are kind of cute. I really like this one. This kind of gives me the Pixar vibe. All right, yes, this is pretty good. I'm really happy about this one right here. Let's see the other one, just to see, but it's a bit less cute, I guess because the eyes are more tiny, but it's also cute. It just looks like more like a regular rat. This one is more like a cool Pixar rat. It's pretty cute. I like the cheese here though. And I see that this rat has a large nail right here and some weird toes. So yeah, the hands are still not perfect on either photos. So as you can see, it's not yet perfect. These models are learning as they grow and I believe they will soon be kind of perfect. But what's very cool here with these new apps that are allowing us to generate images based on prompts is that we can now create a design in Canva and instead of searching for the right photo or the right illustration in the Canva library, I can generate whatever image I need. I get 25 free credits, it will refresh every month, and I can, on top of that, I can even edit my photo. So if I want to use, for example, the background remover on that photo, I can run it. It will probably get rid of the background, and as you can see, it will get rid of the background and keep my ugly rat with the long nail. All right, so I think this shows you kind of the power of these text to image image generation apps. We have three right now in Canva. We have text to image, we have doll E, and we have Imogen from Google. All right, guys, let's move on to the next category of apps. This one is for generating beautiful QR codes. The next app I would like to introduce to you is called Hello Q art. All right, so this one right here, it's the first one. Let's click on it and let's quickly have a look. So the next generation of QR codes are here. Give your QR codes an artistic touch. So this app will transform a boring black and white QR code into something more beautiful. So it will try to, with the help of AI, incorporate a design inside your QR code, but the QR code will still be working. So you will still be able to scan it, but instead of just being a boring pixelated square, it will represent some sort of like design or image. All right, so let's give it a spin. I'm going to click here and this is how it works. All right, so you need two things here. You need a URL. So so let's make it our YouTube channel. You need a description. So I'm starting to get hungry. So I'm going to try this one. A pile of delicious pancakes with dripping honey. Okay, a pile of delicious pancakes with dripping honey. Let's try to generate this QR art. All right, let's see what Canva gives us right here. What I like about this technology is that it takes kind of like a boring piece of design and tries to elevate it. Oh, this is cute. So here's my QR code. I can definitely see the pile of delicious pancakes and the dripping honey. All right, so let's try this. I'm gonna use my QR code reader and boom scan right away and it's opening our YouTube channel. Perfect, so that worked pretty well. Let's try another one, okay? So this time I'm gonna delete that and I like that this URL box remembers the previous URL I put here. So this morning when I was trying this, I used the Canva master course URL right here or at least the bit.ly I created for it. And now I am going to try another prompt for another QR code, a tropical forest. Let's go for a tropical Tropical forest. Very simple prompt. Let's see if I get a nice tropical forest. There you go. My tropical forest has been generated. So I'm going to stretch it to actually see how it looks. Looks pretty cool. And again, I'm going to try this. So I'm going to use my QR code reader right here. Boom snapped right in and there you go. Go straight to the Canva master course. So as you can see, this works beautifully. I want to be completely honest with you though, not all prompts will generate beautiful QR codes. So these were our two prompts that have been working well for me, but I've tried other prompts. Like I tried to generate a hamster. I tried to generate some other types of animals and they were not always looking great. So yeah, I just wanted to put that out there. It's not all 
always gonna look great. So if you try a new QR code, it's not that great, don't blame me. It's just how it works. It's just where the technology is at at the moment. Just keep trying different prompts and you for sure will find something that works for you. All right, moving on to the next app. And once again, jumping into another category. This is the last one that is kind of AI related. This one is text to speech or voice over generation. And the app we are looking for is called AI Voov. Okay, AI Voov, like so. So when you click here, you click on the app, this is what you get. AI Voov is a text to speech generator, which means you can type in your prompt, you can write some text, and a voice will be auto generated with different types of languages, different types of voices based on your text prompt. So, this is very similar to Murph AI that we have already reviewed on the channel. So, let's give it a try. Okay, so you have 2000 characters remaining. So, the first thing you need to know when you you try AI Voov is that you will need to create an account. So I have already created my account, so I'm already logged in. But if you're not logged in, the app will not let you generate any audio at all. So you need to create that account. It's free and you will get 2000 character remaining. So character meaning one letter. Okay, so that's what comes for free with the free trial in Canva. Then you can buy one of their packs to buy more if you are interested. But for me, just want to test it out. So let's first First, have a look at the different languages. We have a bunch of different English accents from the US, from the UK. We can preview, for example, let's say UK, Singapore, Philippines. Let's say an English accent from the Philippines. And if we click here, we have a male voice with James and a female voice with Rosa. Let's go with Rosa. I can preview. Hi. I can read any text you type here. Okay. That's good. I'm going to bump the volume here. Hi, I can read any text you type here. All right, that's good. Let's try another one. Let's try an Australian accent, mate. I want to hear English from Australia from a man. Male, William, Russell. Let's go for William. Hi, I can read any text you type here. Okay, Tasha. Hi, I can read any text you type here. All right, so that was the English accents. Let's go for another language uh, that I speak. For example, French. Can I search by typing? No. Can't. Good to know. I need to scroll. French. Yes. French from France, from Belgium. Yes. Let's say we have Charlene and Gérard. Okay. Let's go with Charlene. Salut. Je peux lire n'importe quel texte que vous tapez ici. Okay. What about Gérard? Salut. Je peux lire n'importe quel texte que vous tapez ici. All right, so pretty neutral accent. So let's have a go. Let's use English because more people will understand. So again, back to English, English from India. Let's select a character. So we have Nirja, female premium. I guess when they say premium, it means I cannot use it with the free version. So I kind of want a male that is not Premium, female, okay, Gorange, male standard. Okay, let's go for Diraj. And the text is this one. Let's go and generate the audio. So when you generate the audio, you are actually using your character, your credits, okay? So my text has been added here. We can see right here, there is an audio track that has been added to my Canva timeline right here. So I'm going to use the duration button to get into timeline view. And let's see. I cannot believe you are not not yet subscribed to our channel. May I ask what you are waiting for? All right, this was nice, guys. May I ask what you are working for? I think that was pretty good. I like this accent. That was pretty cool. So the way you would typically use this, well, obviously you could create characters for a story and then you could create different voices for these characters. I'm not going to get into that here, but this would be a very cool tutorial idea, like creating a children's book, for example, with different characters you could create the characters with the image generator type of apps or you could use an external one like Midjourney or anything really. Create your characters and then you create your voices with AI Voov or with Murph AI or similar apps and then you could animate all of that with apps like HeyGen or apps like DID presenter avatars and everything kind of comes to life. Let me know in the comments below if you would be interested in seeing such 
such a tutorial on the channel where we combine different apps, AI apps, to create a story, to create an animated cartoon. All right, so this was AI Vuv, very easy, very straightforward. You just choose your language, choose your voice, type in your text and generate your audio. It will create an audio clip that you can use on your timeline and you can move that clip to anywhere you want, obviously. All right, moving on to the next app and to the next app categories. Now we are going to talk about the design apps, the apps that will help you elevate your Canva designs. All right, guys, we have five apps to go. All of these will help you create better design or add something special to your design. The first one is called Can Grid. It's written like this, Can Grid, and it looks like so. So when you click on it, what Can Grid allows you to do is to simply generate nice looking grids in different styles to be included on your page, on your Canva design. Let's have a look at what you can do. So you see by default, you have this grid right here. You can first customize the shape of your grid so you could have uh, little lines like so you can have dots triangles squares you can have diamonds you can have pluses okay kind of like the dots next shape fill okay so you can have solid outline or mixed kind of like outline the color you can customize the color of your grid okay it's a pity that you cannot access your brand kit colors right here that would be nice but you can type in the hex code so i guess it's just one extra step i would have liked to have access to my brand kit right here okay so let's use a dark gray like so i have something in mind i kind of want to represent produce next the row you can add more rows and columns okay i'm gonna go maximum and the shape size i'm gonna make that kind of tiny and you know what i'm gonna change it back to solid and go the smallest size okay now i have my grid right here let's change the color this one is a little bit sad let's go for purple or this nice purple right here good now i'm gonna add this to my design and you see this is what we have generated this little grid right here. So you can resize it, make it bigger or smaller. Or what you can do, you can simply duplicate it. Okay, so if I hold my option key and move like so, I can now duplicate this little grid right here and simply fill in my page with all of the dots like so. There you go. I have now filled my entire page with these little dots, kind of like the whiteboard, the Canva whiteboards. Remember, they are kind of like structured like this. And if I zoom out, you can see all of the dots. So yeah, I think this is a good idea. This company right here, Canbox, has created a bunch of different apps like this one that can do only one thing, like a one simple thing. For example, other apps by Canbox include the Can Blob, the Can Squircle, where you can create a shape which is between a circle and a square or squircle yeah they have the can lorem app so they kind of like find features that are missing in canva in the design tools and they create it and they add it in the form of an app and this is genius in my opinion so this one is called can grid check it out it's completely free to use you don't need to install anything to log into anything you just open the app and start using it all right let's move on to the next one this next one is called Swift XR 3D Snap. I'm going to cover it pretty fast because I believe this is the app right here, Swift XR 3D Snap. I'm going to click on it. What this app does is that it helps you generate a snapshot or a GIF of a 3D model that you have created with Swift XR. If you've never used Swift XR in your life, that was my case before this morning, then maybe you don't need this app. But if you have Swift XR account and if you have have created some 3D models. Now this could be useful because you can snap an image of it and bring it into Canva. So they give you three snaps example right here, like this robotic arm. That looks pretty cool. Okay, that's a very cool 3D render, but it's just the static snapshot of it. Then you have a building, Okay, and then you have this avatar guy right here. Now, this might not really speak to you. You might not understand what this is about. I believe in order to understand what it does, we need to go to the actual platform. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's head over to Swift XR so I can show you what it is. Swift XR is this platform right here that allows you to create augmented reality, kind of like visuals, virtual reality. You can get started for free. I think it's web-based. I have not used it to be 
fully transparent. But if we scroll down here, we can see what the app does and what the app looks like. So we have our robotic arm right here. We see there's an animation attached to it. Hence the possibility to export this as a GIF from Canva. Once you have imported your model, you can change the background, etc., etc. So you can do a bunch of different cool things on that platform on Swift XR. And then when you come back to Canva, you can simply see all of your different 3D models will probably be loaded here and you can start using them as simple snapshots like this one. All right. So because this requires the use of another platform that I don't know, I'm not going to spend too much time with this one. Just wanted to include it in this episode in case you are already a Swift XR user. In that case, this is really good news for you. Now, moving on to the next app. The next app is called Wave Generator. Okay, so it's written like this, wave, like a wave generator. And here again, a very simple app that does one thing, creates kind of like randomized waves, but also bars or spikes like this, you know? And so the first thing you need to choose is the shape of your wave. So you have the wavy thing, you have the spiky thing, and you have the barry thing, okay? So you can next add more, I would say, elements to that wave, more complexity, and that's pretty much it. There is no button for color because this can be changed afterwards. So let's go ahead and create a wave, a nice looking wave for our design right here. There's also a randomized button if you want to create something random. Okay, add wave to my design. So there you go. I can make that all the way to the end of the design, make it like so. And from here, I can change the color. I can now customize this as a normal Canva element. So if I click on the color button, I can change that to my brand colors, which I believe is actually a better way to do the color thing than for the grid, for can grid, because can grid didn't have access to my brand kit colors here because they give me the element and the element is customizable. Then by clicking on the color button, I have all of my color palettes. So I do prefer this way of working with colors. And I can also add a gradient into this. Okay, so if I want to create a gradient wave thing, I can because I have the option to just simply use gradient. So this wave is not extra cool. So let's try to randomize a few things. Yeah, I like this one. I'm going to add this wave to my design like so. And again, I can use one of the gradients here. So I was generating a gradient from this color. There you go. Now I have this cool wave that I can use for my slides or for my videos, anything really. I can even add an animation to this afterwards. So here again, let me come back to the interface of this app. It's called Wave Generator. It does one thing, it generates waves. The next app I want to introduce to you is also from the CanBox family. It's called Can Border. Okay, Can Border. Search for Can Border. This one right here. And what this one does is to generate a border to your page. Okay, so you have the choice of a solid versus a dashed border. If you click here, so this represents your page layout. If I click here, I can see a preview of what this frame might look like. Okay, it's not yet on my design. I haven't yet added the frame to my design, but it gives me an overview. I can again change the color. So yeah, here again, no access to my brand colors, but I can add my color manually and then click here again to generate a new preview. I can play around with the margin. Okay, so this will change the position of my border and also its size, the border thickness, okay, the dash gap. So I have a bunch of different customization options. I even have some advanced settings. So the corner roundness, make it more or less round, the pixel width. Okay, so I can really play around and create a border to my exact dimensions. And then I could even open the border. So open a border side. Yeah by playing with these options right here. Okay, I'm going to reset everything and show you, for example, like a frame with an open border on the left. So let's add this to my design. And there you go. I'm going to delete the previous one. There you go. So I can see this. I'm going to delete this wave as well. So just so you can see what I have generated here. So again, this will not revolutionize Canva, but it just adds a handy feature that was not there yet. So same vision for CanBox with can border, find something that's not there, create it, make an app out of it, and just hope people start using it. 
So there you go. We have one more app to go, guys. This one is called Emojify. It's written like so, Emojify. Let's search for it. It's this emoji face with the cowboy hat. Let's click on it. So this is what it does. You need to upload a photo of yourself and then it will transform that photo into a set of emojis. All right. So showing you some sample results. So first you need to select a photo. Okay. I'm going to use this photo of mine that I have prepared because I'm kind of an organized guy. I prepare my tutorials. So there you go. I have this photo. It's going to be emojified in a second. And there you go. I have my set of 12 emojis. Yeah. With the photo. So when you click on them, there you go. This is what they look like. Okay. So this is again, not groundbreaking, but it's kind of fun. You can create your customized emojis like the one with the sweat. There you go. So yeah, you have a set of 12 emojis. Too bad. You cannot customize this further. Like you have the entire suite of emojis. You only have 12 and you will be always limited to the same ones. But I mean, this is kind of funny. Not all of them are great, but I mean, you can have fun with this. It's just a fun little way to customize a presentation. For example, could have like your customized emoji. All right, guys, let me know in the comment section, which one of these nine apps is your favorite? I really am curious to know which one is the one you are going to be using the most. Is it one of the AI text to image generator? Is it the QR code generator or maybe the voiceover generator? Well, let me know in the comments below. I will read them. I will answer them. And that's it for me for today. I'm going to leave you guys with our generative AI playlist in which you will find a bunch of other tutorials like this one. Thank you for sticking around until the end. We appreciate your support. I will see you in the next video.